Welcome to BioTalk, a GBAC TV production. Today I'm with Patricia Olinger, the Executive Director of GBAC, along with Dr. Gavin McGregor-Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Hello, you two. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. It looks like you're on vacation. Well, it might be, but you you know, as a journalist, it never ends. And today we're going to dig into a topic that's important, uh, monkeypox. There's a ton of information out there, videos, interviews, articles. Everyone wants to know what to know, what to believe in. Right now, we think about a few months ago, monkeypox has not been was not considered a, a main concern. That has changed. It's now being declared a state of emergency in several cities and states. The numbers keep increasing so rapidly, it's difficult to keep up. So let's talk about this a little bit. And we'll start with you, Gavin. Where are we right now with the monkeypox situation? Where, what I uh, mentioned, Jeff, you might be on vacation. August is the month that everyone takes vacation. So it's a really important point to get out that not everyone needs to be concerned about monkeypox, but it is a very, very important issue for the cleaning industry. And this is why, Jeff, the first case in this, this explosion of cases around the world occurred on May the 5th in London, in UK, in the UK, United Kingdom. In less than 100 days, Jeff, we've seen this virus be confirmed, confirmed cases in less than 100 days in 88 countries. Now, globally, and again, we probably haven't reported all because of our systems have weaknesses and, and there's, you know, if the world's a big place. Not all the cases have been laboratory confirmed, but we're at just over 28,000 cases today in 88 countries in less than 100 days. Here in the US, though, we are at 7,510 laboratory confirmed cases. And our first case was even later than that. Our first case was on May 18th. It has now spread rapidly to all states and territories, but two. There's only two that don't have it. So everyone else has it. On August the 1st, we saw the New York City Mayor declare a state of emergency over monkeypox that frees up money and frees up resources. We saw the Illinois governor uh, issue a public health emergency very same day. We've seen Governor Gavin Newsom in California declare a state of emergency, Jeff, in California. Again, frees up money, frees up resources. So our focus right today is we cannot live with this disease. It should not be here. It, 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 it's in infecting a small percentage of the population at the moment, but a significant increase geographically by location. And it's our focus today, Jeff, is we need to eradicate monkeypox. And that's our, we have to develop a strategy for that. Good information. Patty, what do you have to add to that? And does this look anything like the uh, coronavirus pandemic? So people need to understand that these are two very different viruses. So as we know, um, you know, COVID-19 uh, disease, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is primarily spread through airborne, you know, um, exposures. We know that. We know that there is a, you know, a percentage, we don't know what percentage that is, that if there's a contaminated surface and and you touch it and you touch your eyes, nose and mouth, as Gavin would put it, um, your holes here, then you potentially have that ability to become infected. But it's primarily an airborne concern, which is why we're focusing so much on HVAC systems and healthy air, healthy indoor environments. Cleaning for health, hygienic cleaning is extremely important when we talk about monkeypox. So monkeypox is a completely different virus and it is, it is primarily spread in a completely different way. And it is through body fluids as far as if, if I happen to have a pustule on my hand and I you know, I shake hands with somebody and they have a, a cut on their hand, they could potentially become infected. So those intimate relations that we're hearing about from, um, you know, hugging somebody, kissing somebody, um, sexual relations, that is that, you know, transfer potentially in that intimate relation there. But surfaces and fomites, what we call in the biosafety world, 
fomite transfer or, you know, somebody touches a glass and, you know, they happen to have the virus there and then you take that glass or linens from, you know, um, an infected person's room, um, you know, clothing in, in towels from an infected person's room. Those things can transfer the virus as well. So it is extremely important that we, what we call in GBAC, a scalable response gets put in place. And that means that, okay, we need to start thinking about our surfaces, those, those frequently touched spots, handles on doors, um, railings on, in, in areas, um, bathrooms need to be really close attention as we clean and, and sanitize and disinfect. Again, hygienic cleaning needs to be put in place. So the word scalable response for the cleaning industry, you laid out a few ideas there, Patty. Gavin, anything to add to that, that, you know, as, as this becomes a bigger issue that our members, the cleaning industry needs to know about anything else? Yeah, really important, Jeff. Communication needs to be clear. The information needs to be precise. And we're seeing this from the federal government and from the state government. They're telling the cleaning industry what to do. And what it means for the cleaning industry, we have to go back and do some more training, more education. Um, you know, we need to understand that there is a risk and we've got to get move away from what we did with COVID. We said most likely, not probably, no. Right now, the strategy is to eradicate. And so you have to do all the pieces of the jigsaw to break the chain of transmission, to, to, to destroy this virus, to get rid of it, to prevent it from going from humans to an animal population, which has the potential to do that. So really important for the cleaning industry, Jeff, um, we have to revise our regulations, our standards, the US Department of Labor, the OSHA standards for say, bloodborne pathogens, for respiratory protection, for personal protective equipment, there is chances that right now with so much virus out there in so many states, people getting sick all the time, they will turn up into a hotel. They'll go to a school. They'll go to an airport. They'll hop on a plane, a bus or a train. And, you know, the, the question here for everyone in the cleaning industry, if you knew someone sat in this chair here, Jeff, with monkeypox and they got up, would you come and sit in that chair right after them? No, you wouldn't. You would clean and disinfect it the way the professional cleaners are trained to do that. Yeah. You know, I, Jeff, it's one of those things that, you know, what we learned and what everybody learned through the, the COVID-19 outbreak, we need to, you know, dust those things off and think about it. First of all, we have a tendency to talk a lot about, you know, what OSHA here in the United States is doing or what EPA is doing. This is something, this is a global pandemic. And so each country will have guidance and people need to go to their country guidance. If there isn't something there to go to WHO and then refer to those other big countries like the UK or Canada or the United States is what is in place there. The other thing is remember the things that we learned, hand hygiene. You know what? Hand hygiene is something that we should just be teaching from a very you know young age. You need to wash your hands and do it do it correctly. That twenty seconds with soap and water, and when you don't have soap and water available, use hand sanitizer. You know, um, use you know we we used to everybody shake hands. If you're in Europe, you know you'd hug and you'd kiss on both sides of the face, or sometimes three times. You know, let's let's go back to elbow bump for a while. It is really important to understand, be aware of your surroundings. When we start gathering, like in events, that's when we tend to let our guards down because we're so excited. We have so much COVID fatigue right now. We are so excited to let those guards down that we want to be social. We're social in beings, but we need to think about what do we need to not only protect, as Gavin said, do you wanna sit in that chair if you're not sure? Um, you know, we need to protect ourselves, our families, our communities, and to be resilient. And that's so important right now. So Gavin, talk to us about recovery from this. Uh, you've seen other monkeypox cases, looking at those compared to now, how long are we going to be in this? And what's that look like? Uh, Jeff, I first saw monkeypox in Africa many years ago on an outbreak. Um, again, uh, we're seeing cases here now in the U.S. in 88 countries. 
the previous outbreaks that we've had for monkeypox have usually just fizzled out. Um, we found out you know, from being an epidemiologist or a disease detective where the transmission was 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 occurring, and we've put in uh, solutions to cut the chain of trans tra uh, chain of transmission. But this is different, and this is different because in less than a hundred days, it's gone to eighty eight countries, and now Jeff, it's been found in the wastewater, for example, in San Francisco City. So that means it's now you know, being put into the sewage systems, which is a good detection system. But more also, Jeff, those previous outbreaks, they were virus that came from animals to people. Now we're seeing it go from people to people. And our other concern we have is for it going from people to pets, to people to animals, like rats, rodents, squirrels. And if that does, if that happens, we are in a, a very serious situation where it could, we may not get rid of it. So again, remain focused, needs to be eradicated. Okay, thanks, Gavin. Patty, as a wrap-up, why don't you talk to us about more on what we need to know and how ISSA and GBAC are here to help? And thanks, Jeff. You, you know, ISSA and GBAC, we will continue to keep updating. Gavin and I will be here with you um, while you're on vacation, um, but to keep people updated as to what we need to be focusing on. But remember, clean and disinfect those areas where you know, somebody with monkeypox has spent, you know, those that, that spent time. The other thing is when we are in situations where there's a lot of people congregating where you don't know necessarily, and you shouldn't, um, the status of individuals, uh, then make sure in as far as the the hygienic cleaning that's going on, our routine cleaning to high, to even a scalable response, we're paying very close attention to cleaning and disinfecting those frequently touched areas, the handles, the bathrooms, the the railings, those areas that we just don't even think about it, but we grab and we touch. Make sure that hand hygiene is a very, you know, big, important part of that. So we need to make sure that those hand hygiene, those, if we can't, if it's not in an area where we can wash our hands, the hand sanitizer stations are, are stocked and that we continue to keep those stocked. Um, laundry. Laundry is a big deal here. How we handle laundry, you don't just grab it and stuff it in a bag and aerosolize um, particles and everything. You know, you need to look at it, how we handle that and handle it carefully and then wash it immediately. Um, if we're looking at training, training for, you know, infectious disease awareness um, is really important. You know, you know, we put together, you know, a, a infectious disease awareness course from GBAC, but talk to your people about what that means, how you break chains of infection and pay a lot of attention to personal protective equipment, how they're utilizing it, and then how they put it on and doff, and doff what we would call doff, how they take it off very carefully so that they don't potentially um, expose themselves if the outside of the PPE has uh, monkeypox or yeah, COVID-19, um, you know, or SARS-CoV-2, the virus on it. That's one of those things that we need to be better about. We've gotten too lax on taking our masks on and off. And, you know, with that, you know, we're here to help. Um, our GBAC star facilities are ready for that scalable response, um, but we're here to help the industry. And, um, and we'll continue to update in with GBEC um, TV alerts.